Hello everyone, so now that my fire breathing fortress is all done, I figured it's time for some more dinosaur fun, and I thought a scientifically accurate velociraptor named Blue for all of you would be kind of cool. Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well, and thank you for tuning into Moose Motion. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed the content, comment below what you think, share with your friends, and perhaps consider subscribing if you're new, and be sure you have your post notifications turned on so you don't miss any of the new content. Anyway, thank you for your support, it's highly appreciated. <laughs> So during this video, what we're going to be making is the armature doll skeleton for a velociraptor. To be more precise, we're going to make a scientifically accurate, well, blue from Jurassic World, which I'm sure most of you have seen at this point, and well, has a fairly large fan base. So I figured it'd be kind of cool to make a scientifically accurate interpretation of this character. So seeing how I'm doing a scientifically accurate blue for all of you, I figured this is a good time to do a deep dive on velociraptor. So let's learn some fun facts about this dinosaur. Many of us saw Jurassic Park the movie, and we were all petrified of that interpretation of a velociraptor. Since it's not every day you get to see a giant lizard calmly devour someone. However, not everything we've seen is 100% true. So during this series or dino build, I hope you join us while we discover and disprove some of the mysteries behind these dinos. Velociraptor is a sickled clawed dinosaur that flourished in Central Eastern Asia during the late Cretaceous period, 99 million to 65 million years ago. It was a carnivorous theropod or a dromaeosaur. Velociraptor was smaller than most people expect, mainly because of Jurassic Park, the real life size was about the size of a turkey, or a mid or large sized dog. So the real life Velociraptor reached a length of 1.8 meters or 6 feet long, and an estimated height of 0.5 meters or 1.6 feet tall. And perhaps the weight was no more than 45 kilograms or about 100 pounds at the high estimations. To put this into perspective, the average Velociraptor would just exceed the knee of the average adult. So the overall definition of a Velociraptor is a small active carnivore that probably fed on Protoceratops, possibly closely related to birds more than other dinosaur types. Now the reason behind its name. They are two Latin words combined together which mean quick thief. This is due to its main attribute that is evidently its speed and hunting method, which has left many paleontologists who doubt if it was completely carnivorous or scavenger, which moves us to our next point. So was it really a hunter? Although many have identified it as one of the most capable hunters, there has also been theories whether or not it actually hunted its prey. As recent studies have shown, there are velociraptor bites in dinosaur fossils that were already in the decomposition process. However, this idea still theoretically gives a higher priority in contrast to it being a natural carnivore that mainly fed on smaller animals. Although it sometimes opted for large herbivores deduced by finding a specimen where a velociraptor was fighting a protoceratops, reaffirming its position as a predator. As a quick side note here, that specimen is referred to as the fighting dinosaurs, and if you've never seen it or heard of it before, I highly recommend you check it out, and at some point I would definitely like to do an animation, well, reenacting what that find basically inclines. Now onto the place it all started. The first fossils of this species were located in a desert in Mongolia in 1923 where it is said that could be their natural habitat, mainly in dense forests surrounded by rivers. Although it's been found in extremely arid areas, it is believed the ideal environment for velociraptors were wet areas, so it has been determined that the climate and environment of this dinosaur has gone under some slight changes, which isn't too surprising to believe. Since these beings walked on the earth, more than 70 million years have passed. Now it's on to running, so run Velociraptor, run! Any rate, so were they sprinters by nature? One of the most outstanding qualities of this prehistoric being is their incredible speed, which is said to equal that of a racehorse. However, countless studies have shown this isn't exactly correct. Since in fact its legs did allow running at high speeds, and currently succeed an average adult, but not by a large margin. On the other hand, another limitation of this quality is they could only use it for short periods of time. Now it's time to talk about lethal weapons. To be hunter by nature, you need the necessary tools and conditions. And this prehistoric animal had them because it had sharp teeth shaped like a saw. 
Although if we're to talk about its main weapons, there are its long and distinctively shaped claws, located on its hind legs, which would have been used to slice open the thick skin of its prey, to facilitate access to its vital organs. However, it is believed the claws could have lost their edge through the passage of time. So that bears the question, were they methodical assassins? This species is believed to have a hunting style quite similar to that of raptors today since it's mainly based off pouncing on its prey and eating them alive, till the prey dies of blood loss or organ extraction. It's not a very nice bird. This employed method was identified because of the great resemblance of Velociraptor's legs and that of owls of today. Although this patient style would also resemble the way crocodiles catch their prey. Now that seeing how we're on the topic of hunting, were they group hunters? For many years, it's been believed that velociraptors hunted in packs in order to depredate larger animals. However, there is no evidence that this is true, given that all fossils have been found unaccompanied. It is believed that this characteristic is associated to the resemblance of Deinonychus, which did comply to this rule. On the contrary, recent studies show that in reality, velociraptors were solitary hunters. Now it's on to, well, probably the most controversial part of the video, cinematic confusion. As it has already been mentioned, the movie Jurassic Park does not show the true size of velociraptors. However, that being mentioned, it is technically not based off the same species, since it's very likely what they showed was a Deinonychus who would be a much larger species and even more ferocious than the Velociraptor itself. Just to exemplify, this dinosaur species hunted prey that outnumbered it in size and strength. However, it compensated for those shortcomings by hunting in groups. Now, there is one thing I am slightly kind of ashamed to admit, that I have listened to the audiobook of Jurassic Park as well as Lost World several times as well as the backstory behind the books, so... I know for a fact that technically the name was changed from Deinonychus to Velociraptor to essentially add dramatic effect. Although that being said, I recently went to a dinosaur event in my local Bale city and uh, to the contrary, apparently Deinonychus could have been, well, potentially named Velociraptor for a short period of time due to its popularity, so it's hard to say as to where this controversy actually started from, whether or not it was the scientists or the movie, but generally speaking, I think the movie is a little bit more widely known for being more controversial. Now, onto, well, it being very similar to a bird. When the Velociraptor is shown in different scenarios, it's always represented as a giant reptile. However, this feature isn't close to the reality of this species because multiple studies have shown that this dinosaur was completely covered in feathers, which indicates in reality the texture of this dinosaur would be that of a slightly larger bird. In spite of possessing feathers, they didn't evolve enough to develop flight capabilities. In spite of not being able to actually use their feathered arms for flying, it doesn't mean they were completely useless. Some scientists believe that the Velociraptor and various other species could have used their arms for, well, what's called inclined running. The definition of inclined running is essentially while you're running up a hill, and if you have feathers, you are essentially flapping away your wings to assist on, well, the incline. Even some scientists have gone as far as estimating that this dinosaur could have been, well, hunting from trees. Where the premise of this idea is essentially they use their claws to climb up the tree as well as incline running and then wait for their prey to basically stumble in the wrong place at the wrong time and then basically pounce on them much like raptors today. And then enclosing the prey inside their wings while effectively latching onto the prey as it struggles away it, well, tears itself into pieces one would say which personally sounds more terrifying than anything Jurassic Park produced. No offense, guys, but, well, you don't really have much on nature. It's pretty savage sometimes. That being said, I'm definitely looking forward to, well, reinterpreting some of these, well, hunting styles in the form of stop-motion animation. And seeing how we're still slightly on the topic of feathers, obviously you have read the title for this video, this dinosaur is going to be a representation of Blue from Jurassic World. So that basically means I'm going to be covering this dinosaur completely in dark blue feathers. So I'm definitely looking forward to actually having this project completely finished off and having a fuzzy little blue velociraptor to my ever-growing little dinosaur collection. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about the Velociraptor. 
Did some of these facts surprise you? Let me know in the comments below. And I do apologize, Will, if I destroy the image of Velociraptor for some people who are rather, well, large Jurassic Park fans. However, reality doesn't care. And the big fact stands that a vast majority of the dinosaurs you are unfortunately seeing in Jurassic Park, as well as Jurassic World in particular, are generally just, well, movie monsters. And now that we're nearly finished part one here, I'm going to mention during part two, we will probably be doing a deeper dive on this dinosaur, on what it actually would have looked like, and probably explaining in further detail, well, obviously feathers and various other topics. So if you're new to this channel and want to continue the deep dive on this dinosaur, be sure to subscribe and have your post notifications turned on so you don't miss that video. Now it's time for the build rundown, as well as some other exciting news. So during this dinosaur project today, one could say, we used some armature wire to make the frame today, and some oven baked clay for the bones I say, and some tin foil to keep the weight down one would say, and some plasticine and some sticky tack to make everything stay. Now it's on to the good news I say, now as of today my channel has officially reached 1k. And I would personally like to thank you all for following me on this journey, I say. So one could say there's definitely a lot more content coming your way. And I'm happy to say, now that we've officially reached 1k after this Velociraptor is done, I say, we'll be making a stop motion Godzilla, one could say. Which should be a lot of fun, I say. Now on a slightly less poetic note and, well, more serious one, unfortunately my channel is very close to well monetization, but we're not quite there just yet. And since Seeing that you, well, have made it this far in the video, you're kind of my targeted demographic for this message. Because obviously you've enjoyed this video enough to stick it out to the very end. Now, unfortunately that brings us to the watch time hour problem. In order for a YouTube channel to achieve monetization, it needs one of two things. First off, it needs a thousand subscribers, which honestly, I'm so excited that my channel has gotten that far. It means so much to me that over, well, a thousand people at this point have enjoyed my artwork and followed me on this journey so far. And secondly, it needs 4,000 watch time hours. Now, unfortunately, I'm not quite close to that benchmark, so you have a mission at this point. Be sure to go binge as much of my content as possible. And as always, be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the content, comment below what you think, share with your friends, and perhaps consider subscribing if you're new. Anyway, that's enough from me. Till next time, take it easy.